making of Indian constitution. It is a bit difficult task at that time when India was not having freedom. So uh, again our history starts for making of constitution. Uh, it's obvious armed revolutionaries were there but they were not uh, actually uh, focusing on this type of event that there should be a constitution and uh, we have to act according to constitution, there should be new constitution for free India like that. Initially their target was to get freedom. It is something like a bit puzzle, first hen or first egg. So like that bit difficult question is there that there should be first freedom of India or first making of constitution of India. So, uh, there was question at that time that whether there should be constitution of India or India should have freedom. But uh, somewhere around uh, 1928, what we call Nehru report, that is actually we have to consider as first constitution prepared for India. But uh, that was not we can call as for constitution of independent India. At the most we can call it as uh, constitution having dominion status, constitution demanding dominion status because at that time these leaders were having not that courage to demand for total freedom which was in latter period particularly Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru gained that uh, and at a session that is Lahore session he claimed that we want now total independence or total freedom. Now uh, the communist leader named as Manavendra Nath Roy uh, popularly known as M.N. Roy he demanded first time that there should be a constitution for India somewhere in 1934. But prior to that also we are aware that a round table conference was demanded by Barrister Jina, then uh, N.C. Kelkar, Barrister Chittaranjan Das and Pandit Motilal Nehru uh, already in 1925 when they were in the parliament at that time. But now here uh, the question is that when actually we can start demand. Now these all demands were there to British government only. We were demanding. For example, Congress also followed by M.N. Roy. Congress uh, in 1935 demanded that there should be a constitution for India and constitution committee should be said that constitution should be made by Indians. So that is the demand at that time. Now Britishers said that uh, really we have to consider this thing or Britishers principally accepted. So whenever you don't want to accept and don't want to deny, this word is a very nice word that principally I am accepting that. That means what? I am not ready to act on it but principally yes you are correct there should be constitution from your side. Now this is according to Woodrow Wilson, the American president in 1913, uh, 1914 war, that is World War One. At that time only, uh, somewhere around 1917 or 1918, he demanded that uh, colonies, when we have to consider about colonies, uh, we have to consider the local uh, opinion about that colonies and local people should be considered for uh, that colonies. So like that, on that basis, they started demanding, yes, we want now uh, making of our constitution. But uh, a vast country like India, at that time, it was ranging from northwest frontier region that means uh, today's Pakistan's province that Waziristan uh, like that uh, part from that to Myanmar and Tibet, Nepal all this including till Sri Lanka, Aden, Aden is in western part uh, Red Sea and till Sri Lanka the vast territory was there and for that uh, vast territory making of single constitution that was a bit difficult task particularly when we were considering 1928 and all these years but uh, later on Britishers made this task very easy how the partic uh, partition of India so uh, various attempts were there to partition of India and ultimately in 1935 as we are aware that uh, Myanmar was separated from India, Sri Lanka was separated from India Aden was separated from India and now whatever the remaining India was there for that purpose constitution making that was there Britishers 
were not ready to act immediately. But when World War was at its uh, peak, particularly Hitler, Hitler was uh, at winning front everywhere. At that time, they sent a mission that is called as Crips mission. We are aware of that in previous episode only we discussed. But Crips commission that was ready to allow us to make our own constitution. But that should be implemented after World War, end of World War. And therefore, it was not right at that time. Then onwards, there was cabinet mission plan. And principally, in cabinet mission plan, they said that yes, there should be constitution for India. And for that purpose, we have to set a committee that is called as constitution committee. Now, cabinet mission plan accepted that uh, there should be constitution committee. But who will represent the constitution committee? A simple question made much much more difficult okay uh, now if principally we accept that india is a secular state then we should not consider anything about religion principally if we accept that all indians are equal then we should not differentiate themselves in caste sex and all these things okay and therefore, the question was very, very simple. They should conduct or they should ask the provinces to send their representative. And a committee should set out and that committee will prepare constitution for India. And that should be also provincial constitution. Uh, that is, only we can consider uh, implemented for approximately 10 years. And based on this constitution, we should have experience that what is going in provincy and what is going in center, that experience basis, then onwards, the sole rights should be given to government at that time to frame constitution. That was the right option. But intention of Britishers were not clear. They wanted to fragment India as many fragments as possible. And for that purpose, they said that there must be representation in the Constitution Committee for Muslims, for Sikh, and open category. So Muslims and Sikh separate, remaining they considered as open category. And like that, there should be Constitution Committee. Now, apart from this Constitution Committee, uh, the plan was something uh, I am going to read only. Total strength of constituent, uh, constituent assembly that was to be 389. This is uh, in 1946. This was planned. So, total strength should be 399. I don't know why Britishers are having problem of whole number. So, if you are going through their FPS system, that is foot pound and second system, then also 12 inches equal to 1 feet, like that something. Whereas uh, French are comparatively easy, they say that okay, 10, multiple, multiple of 10. So here also we should have a fantastic number, but they made this odd number. So majority, half half majority should not be there. So many may be possible, but the constituent, uh, constituent assembly was having 389 seats. Of these, 296 seats were to be allotted to British India. British India means where direct British rule was there from that 296 seats and 93 seats to be allotted to princely states. Now we discussed that princely states, uh, some princely states were huge like Jammu and Kashmir, Junagadh or Hyderabad. So like that huge principal, uh, princely states were there. Whereas certain princely states were very small. Say for example Aung in Satara district of Maharashtra. Say, I am revising, Aung in Satara district of Maharashtra, that means very, very small. So like that, some smaller princely states were also there. So they say that there should be group of princely state or princely state, but total 93 seats to be allotted to princely states. Now, out of 296 seats allotted to British India, 292 members were to be drawn from the 11 governor's provinces. 
that means what we are aware of these provinces some provinces like bombay at that time then central provinces then bengal uttar pradesh uh, punjab sindh north west frontier region madras so like that what are the provinces are there from that uh, they said that to 92 members whereas four members from four chief commissioners provinces from each so like that they split out so first split of these members were from where they are coming that means directly from british india from princely state or for from commissioners provinces then each province and princely state or group of state in case of small state uh, were to be allotted seats in proportion of their representative population a uh, respective population now keep in mind when we are talking of population it is said that nearly one seat for every million of population so this is we are calling as representation so this way seat were allotted to the uh, province and princely state seat allotted to british provinces were to be divided in three principal communities that is muslim sikh and open they are not saying hindu or christian or something like that but they say open and uh, general that is general means what all except muslim and sikhs in proportion of their population every time they are considering proportion of their population to so keep in mind for that purpose what census was carried out in 1940 that was the most important part at that time because with that census only uh, the representation etc that was taken and very unfortunate to say here because of our leaders they say non cooperation many people particularly hindus refused to give information to this census and therefore many time it happens that the actual representation of population was not reported in the census uh, anyway the representative of each community were to be elected by members of that community in the provincial legislative assembly okay member was not directly elected from the people or we can say that adult franchise so like today members are directly elected uh, from adult franchise such case was not there so whatever the assembly that means our representatives were there keep in mind assembly representatives were not also elected on basis of direct adult franchise method they were asking people to pay tax and tax payers and uh, property tax payers and so on criteria were there for voting it was not adult franchise voting uh okay you may say that why i am telling this because ultimately we have to analyze the merits and demerits uh, plus point and minus point of constitution at that time all these thing we have to revise now uh and voting was to be by the method of proportional representation by means of single transferable vote so like today we are having rajya sabha voting so like that voting criteria was there and this way the elections were there for constitution committee so constitution committee itself was formed because of this type of communal things now uh, the representatives of the princely states were to be nominated by the heads of princely state that means Uh, our committee was partly indirectly elected and partly nominated so committee was not truly representing india's voice that is the most important thing regarding this constitution committee committee members were selected or elected on basis of their religion and still we are talking about secularism that is the fantastic thing here now uh, 
the most important thing uh, elections were carried out that is in july and august 1946 where at that time indian national congress won 286 whereas muslim league won 73 seats and small group and independent got remaining 15 seats if you are going by this type of representation then it's very clear that uh, what about that 93 seats that should be nominated by princely states but princely states refused to nominate anybody in the uh, this constituent uh, constituent committee as a result it was not truly representative princely states were not ready to send their representative here at the same time another part was there that the congress was at its majority that is to and it is obvious because we are aware that in 1935 1937 selection congress was the winner out of 11 provinces eight provinces were held by congress and uh, initially muslim league was not ready to participate in this constitution committee initially muslim league was not ready to participate as we discussed but later on uh, due to mount batten plan we accepted the partition of india and therefore whatever the constitution committee was there that was uh, changed out some proportion so we are going to discuss this now uh, changes because of independence act so obviously first thing that assembly was made fully sovereign body that means what initially it was working under a british government but now it was not under british government so this is major change in the constitution committee whereas uh, the act empowered assembly to alter any law made by british parliament in relation to india so whatever the laws are there uh, that constitution committee was now able to change out that earlier day it was not possible because that should be carried out from england so this is more most important part assembly also become legislative body okay so at a time that same body was performing two functions at a time try to recollect 1935 india's india, uh, india's act that is government of india act at that time they were not ready say britishers they were not ready to make clear cut changes in central government that is viceroy uh, council so they only made clear changes regarding provincial government but not for the central government now as india got freedom assembly started performing two different function the first function obviously to make constitution and second function to legislate india now they were meeting for different purpose at different time when they were meeting for legislative assembly that is to make uh, sorry uh, that is to make constitution when they are meeting out at that time uh, the constituent body was chaired by dr rajendra prasad and when they were meeting as the legislative body they elected their speaker now we can call as speaker chair person actually uh, named as g v mavalankar that is for legislative purpose so at a time single body was performing two different uh, task now uh, muslim league members were there in constituent assembly but now they were removed because now they wanted pakistan that was given but still uh, in indian state indian region those muslim leaders were there and they were there from muslim league they were allowed to stay here clear and uh, the strength because of that uh, reduced that is from 389 to 299 that was fixed under cabinet mission plan that was fixed as 389 that was reduced to 299 now uh, indian provinces representation that was also reduced from 296 to 229 because uh, we are aware baluchis uh, sorry that uh, sindha was separated 
North respective region was separated, East Bengal was separated and West Punjab was separated. That is the reason. Now, princely states representation also, 93 was there, from 93 it came down to 70. And like that, uh, this assembly was set up and they function. Now, other, other functions, rather than making constitution, they perform Say so for example, it ratified India's membership of Commonwealth in May 1949. Keep in mind, yet, government on basis of adult franchisee yet to arrive. But we become member of Commonwealth, that was ratified by that government only. It adopted the national flag on July 22, 1947. Okay, so that was also not adopted by parliament which was based on adult franchise. Then it adopted national anthem on 24th January 1950. That was also not based on adult franchise based parliament because on basis of adult franchisee the first government formed that was in 1952. So all these functions performed by constituent assembly. It elected Dr. Rajendra Prasad as the first president of India on January 24, 1950. So all these things, uh, our constituent assembly performed, uh, that is, we are discussing about constitution committee. And now we are discussing in next lecture about committees of the constituent committee. So uh, this will be now actual discussion of constitution that will start from our next lecture. Thanks.